Hey everyone, welcome back to Bonnie Haven Soaps. Today we are going to make wax melts. Um, I need to get a whole bunch of these done. So you can see I have a lot of scents out, uh, different fragrance oils and stuff to make all of my fall line and restock my other um, fragrances that I do all the time. So today I'm just gonna show you how I make my wax melts. I, I do it a little bit different than than some people but i mean it's pretty simple basic straight to the point the difference would be the wax that you use the fragrance load you use um but that's about you know maybe temperatures that's about the only difference uh between how people make wax melts um, but i'm going to show you how i make mine so if you're new to the channel uh welcome this channel is all about um creating products i share my techniques how i make things i share recipes if that's something that interests you subscribe and follow along um so let's get to it okay so i am just going to put my hair up um and get my gloves on i like to wear gloves this isn't a body product but i'm still selling this um so i still want to make sure that i have my hair up and i have my gloves on um when i'm making it because these are all products that i sell even though it just goes into a wax warmer um i do sell the product so everything is sanitized everything is clean um for the purpose of, of resale, just like everything that, that I sell. All right, so I have this um, wax melt pot. Now, you don't have to have this. You could use um, a glass Pyrex container or you could use, uh, you can melt this in the microwave. Um, I find melting wax in the microwave to be, uh, you can't control the temperature enough and it usually gets way too hot on you. Um, and then it takes forever to cool down and yada, yada, yada. But not like you can't do it. So you can do it in the microwave. Um, I choose to do it in the double boilers system. So I am going to get this warming up. And I just have my hot plate with my pot and water on over here. Um, and then my wax melt container, as I said, I find this really handy uh, to use. But you can use anything it's kind of important you have a pour spout, but whatever you would like to melt yours in, okay? So I'm just gonna set this on here. I'm gonna do one pound. I like to make my wax melts in clamshells. I do do some single ones for Christmas, things like that, so some specialty ones uh, that I come out with at those times in silicone molds, but most of my wax melts I do do in these. I may be changing up uh, in the future. I'm slowly getting away from all plastics um, just because I want to be more environmentally friendly. These, this is recycled plastic, what they are made of. Um, however, it's still plastic that, I mean, even though it's recyclable plastic, um, we know that only approximately 10% of the plastic that we put into our recycle bin um, actually gets recycled. So, for the sake of the environment, I am getting away from plastics. Everything is going to start being done in reusable or glass or aluminum, which is 100% recyclable. All right, so... Anyways, that's my, my speech on that. But for now, I, I'm going to use up what I have before I switch um, from using these. So this is the way that we're going to do it today. So one pound of wax will make six of these clamshells. So we're just going to, for the purpose of this video, do a one pound batch. I use the Golden Wax 494. It's designed for wax melts, wax tarts and milk and I buy it in the in the great big box 50 pounds and I will show you what it looks like here just get my scale going get it on to ounces and I'll just use this for a scoop so just so you can see what it looks like um, it just comes in the flake form the way that Golden Wax uh, ships it to us. Um, so just flakes, so it melts down fairly quickly. 
just going to take this and get some wax in there because I know the approximate match. We have one pound of wax in there and the reason I'm doing it like this just so that I can easily break things down now this wax um, the manufacturer's suggestion is between um, 9 to 12 percent fragrance load uh, to figure out your fragrance load to start off with you guys you will take the amount of wax that I'm doing so if I'm doing 16 ounces one pound of wax um, and let's say I was doing a 10 pound or a 10% fragrance load, I would just times this by 0 0.10, so 0 0.10, um, and that would give me 10% of what I, of my wax, okay? So now this wax I can do up to a 12%, I'm just going to get this on so it can start melting. Um, I am going to do a 10% or sorry, I'm allowed up to a 12% fragrance load. Now with my candles, I never go over what the fragrance suggested fragrance load is on uh, my candle simply because there is an actual flame there um, and fragrance oil is flammable. Okay, so if we look on this uh, fragrance oil that I get from Windy Points. I really like their labeling because uh, they put all the information right here on the bottom so it's quite handy. Um, so if you look at that, at the bottom here, it'll say what the vanilla is. Flash point is 200 Fahrenheit, usage rate uh, 6% and that's generally the soap. But if you go onto their website, um, it breaks it down what the percentages are for soap, um, body wash all those types of things okay but in a this doesn't go on the skin it goes in a wax melt so that percentage doesn't mean anything as the percentage percentage of fragrance load for your wax now because uh the wax melts go into a warmer okay i go a little bit above what my fragrance load is so with this um and it, it's actually going to depend on the scent some of these scents are pretty strong and i don't need to do that high of a fragrance load so i really suggest that you do your testing um so something like the pumpkin patch uh the vanilla bean marshmallow um apple pie right uh even my lavender is quite strong so i i wouldn't do those um, these ones above my 12%, okay, simply because they're a very strong fragrance, so I don't need to overload those, um, but if I was doing a, a lighter smell, um, such as the peach that I do that people really love, well, I'll actually do a 16% fragrance load on this, um, just because I need that fragrance to be a little bit stronger, because this and uh, it's not a really strong scent. So you just have to kind of um, play around. So what I did uh, when I first started making wax melts was a huge amount of trial and error. If I'm going to try a new fragrance out, um, I do a small batch and then I test them in my own wax warmers um, and just see what the, the fragrance throw um, when the mat when that uh heater is going okay so these ones are ones that i've done previously that were really popular last winter so those ones are the ones that i'm doing people really like those the first one i'm going to do is going to be uh the pumpkin patch fragrance from windy point and it is very it's got a very strong this is awesome in candles as well guys I actually had my little sample one that they sent me, so I'm going to use that up. Okay, so to find out my fragrance load for this, it would be 16 ounces, okay, times 0 0.12, okay, so 0 0.12. And I'm going to get my little cup out here.
And that's another reason to wear gloves because if you get this fragrance oil on your skin, it is concentrated, right? So it's not really good for your skin. They all come with SDS sheets as well. I don't know if you guys keep your women's sheets up to date, um, but the DS, SDS sheets, um, whenever I buy a product, I do print off and I have my uh, sheet binder. That way, if I ever get an inspection from licensing, I have everything in place. Perfect. So that is going to be the fragrance oil. Let's turn this down some. And it's a good idea, you guys, just to stir this up once in a while so you start moving stuff around. It doesn't take long to melt being in the chips. Okay. And then I have all of my colors. Okay. And I get these all from Voyager. You can get liquid dyes. Uh, they work well. Just make sure it's an actual candle dye. Um, I would not use micas or pigments or anything like that because you're going to pour this at a temperature where all that mica and everything is going to settle to the bottom of your wax melts um, where the colored dye will actually be okay, uh, blended into your wax and it adheres to the wax and, and makes everything one solid color. Um, so you know, micas, things like that, I would not use uh, for that reason because all of that mica is going to settle to the bottom before your wax melts start to solidify enough that it stays um, suspended in there. Okay, what am I doing here? I am doing pumpkin patch, correct? So for pumpkin patch, I actually have... I actually have the color pumpkin, okay? Uh, it's number 07, a candle dye block. And I don't make mine super deep colors. Um, the one nice thing about this uh, with candles is you can mix the colors just like you can in soap and, and uh, make the colors that you want. So I just cut a little bit off and I like to shape it like that so that I have pieces I can... Um, dissolve fairly quickly in here. So I'm actually just going to put this wax in there while it's melting so that it begins to melt down. And then once that's melted, I can determine whether that's enough color or not. All right, and my wax is melted, so we're going to take that off. And I just take a cloth and dry the bottom so I'm not getting water in the wax. And I just set it on a paper towel here. So as you can see, this has been completely melted, okay? Um, and I'm happy with that color that I have, so I'm not going to add any more, okay? Um, and simply, I want to take the temperature on this, and we are at 166. The fragrance um, oil flash point is 200, okay? So well below that. Um, and I add my fragrance oil... I mean, some people tell you add your fragrance oil at 80, so we could have this higher so it blends a little bit more. I like to add mine at 60, um, simply because I find if I add the fragrance oil up at 80 Fahrenheit, 180 Fahrenheit, um, what happens is I lose a lot of that fragrance oil that burns off before it cools down. So I add mine at 160 Fahrenheit. So since we are there, I'm going to pour my fragrance oil in okay and I am going to stir for about two minutes it's kind of important that you stir a lot because you want the the molecules of the wax uh, and that fragrance oil to bind together so you want to make sure that it has a good stir so I always say at least two minutes and you'll hear lots of people that make wax melts candles anything where they're adding the fragrance to the wax they'll say two minutes so um, try and be as close to that as you can and just continuously stirring um, to make sure that it's binded well with the wax, okay? Now, um, as far as the directions go uh, from the manufacturer's suggestion for the wax melts is to pour this at 145, okay? So 
that is what we're going to go with because the sooner I get it out of this pot in large, well, one pound is not a large quantity, um, and get it into here, the faster it cools off, the less fragrance that I lose that burns off. But I do need to make sure that this is well mixed. All right, we are at 145, if you can see that. Um, so we are going to pour this. So it's pretty simple. Um, we'll just start here. Because these are all one cube and they mesh at the top, you don't have to worry about pouring in little tiny molds, so it's kind of handy. Going to figure out what I'm going to do when I get rid of these plastic ones when I'm done with these ones. And I try and be really careful so I'm not getting it mm -hmm. all over the side like I did on this one over here, if you can see that. And I just want to make sure that I have these topped up because I know how much my wax weighs right to the top. So I'm just going to go back and make sure so that they're all about equal weights. Because we do have to label these with weights on them. So I want to make sure that I am equal on them. Okay, and then I take the little bit that I have left and I pour it into one of these little heart molds um, so that I can use these as my samples for people that I put in my online orders and such things like that. Okay, and I'm just going to take this, set this back in here for a second and just get that little bit off that's in there. And that's it guys. So now we let this cool. Um, within about half an hour, these will be cool enough um, that they'll be solidified enough. Um, if you try and close the lid too early, the wax starts to stick up here. Uh, you don't want to move them or anything because it moves around. We want to try and keep this as clean as we can. As you can see, I got a little bit of wax there and a little bit of wax there. So I'm going to have to clean that up. Um, but I do use clear labels on my wax melts. So if I get wax on this top lid part, it looks really crappy. So I want to really make sure that I don't get wax up there because it does leave a film even once you get the wax off. So um, I just try and be as careful as I can. Once these are cooled enough um, that they're not going to sweat, don't close lids or anything um, on these and seal the package until they're cooled completely um, so that we don't get condensation inside the package because um, that's not going to go well and then I will label them. Um, maybe in the future I'll do a video on my labeling um, if that's something that you guys are interested in. Um, I can absolutely do that to show you um, what program I use. I actually use a couple different programs for that and different um, types of labels because I have so many different products. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, um, just comment below and, and I'd absolutely do one of those videos uh, in the future for you. Okay. Um, so that's about it guys. And uh, it's that simple. So it's really not hard. The biggest thing is to make sure that you get your fragrance oil in, uh, bind it in there enough uh, that you're watching your fragrance oil load. Um, if it's a very light scent, you're going to have to use more and there's some fragrances that just do not work in wax. So a good tip for that, you guys, is when you buy a fragrance oil, um, even if you're going to the store, most of them all have websites. I would go onto that website and I would look at the customer comments. Nobody knows better than the people that are using the product already. So um, go through that and you can see different people have different effects according to types of wax they use. Um, 
those types of things one person might be you might be using the same wax but they're heating to different temperatures and things like that so um, but the the comments are really good uh, to know whether this fragrant works well in wax or not um, and that's kind of what I do and then I go from there have I had some fragrance oils that do not work well in wax absolutely fragrances that I absolutely loved um, but they just didn't work in wax so they just it was a no-go um, but they work well in bath bombs and stuff like that right so everything kind of has its its own purpose all right so uh, if you have any questions just comment down below if you like the video give me a thumbs up and I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you again soon